my string. Um, so let's see here. I can share my screen. And everyone, you will want to be in um, in speaker view. Okay, so you guys can see this. Okay, great. Hey everyone, my name is Louisa Byron. I'm a violinist, violist, and five-string violinist. And today I'm going to talk about just what is a five-string violin. <laughs> string violin has similar technique to a violin or viola, but the strings are closer together, so you have to be careful not to hit the other strings when you're trying to play. The range of the five string is just like the violin, but now you have the lower C strings, so you have a wider range of notes that you can play. <laughs> string can be used as a viola, so you can play viola repertoire. And it also shines in violin repertoire. What are the advantages of owning a five-string violin? Well, besides the bigger range that you can get as a five-string violinist, you can also be amplified. Having a five-string violin gives me the opportunity to plug in and play with the bands. It also allows me to explore pedals that take my sound to the next level. Not all violinists are going to own a five-string violin, so check with your string friends first before you start writing for them. But the five-string violin is typically found in folk slash fiddle music. If you want to see more awesome musicians who play the five-string violin, I'd recommend checking out Daryl Anger and Casey Dreesen. Daryl Anger is an American fiddle player who founded the Turtle Island String Quartet and the David Grisman Quintet. He's also a professor at Berklee College of Music, and that's where I learned more about the five-string violin. Casey Dreesen is an American bluegrass fiddle player and singer. He also teaches at Berklee College of Music and helped get the five-string violin on the map. It became a common instrument in the fiddle community. Here's a little taste of what I usually use the five-string violin for in my own music. string violin quite a bit in that last clip. I'm going to explain what that is. The chop is a percussive technique that violinists use to either back up another member of the band or to play any type of grooves, basically being the drummer of the band with your bow. So here's a simple chop pattern. I'm emphasizing beats two and four. Two, four, two, four. Here's a closer look at what the chop looks like. So the first thing you're gonna do is a preparation chop, which is gonna be near your bridge. So you saw in the other clip that I was doing one, two, three, four. So I do a little quiet chop here, and the bigger chop is towards the fingerboard. Two. 
once you get that basic chopping pattern down, you can take it a little faster. So we had it at one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, a little faster. Even faster. So now, there are other things you can put into your chopping grooves. For example, there's something called the triple chop. So the rhythm da da da. You can place that in your in your chop grooves. So it sounds like this. So as you're going along. So that's a glimpse into chopping. Any string instrument can do it. So the violin, viola, cello, double bass, if they have a bow, they can chop. And basically just treat it like we're a drummer if you wanna write for any type of chopping, any grooves. Um, speaking of writing for it, this is what the notation looks like for chopping. This is the Chop Notation Project written by Casey Dreesen and Oriel Sana. They start off with some history of the chop and then presents you with the Chop Notation Glossary. You can receive this PDF for free at caseydreesen.com slash chop notation project and download your free copy. So writing for the five string violin, for me personally, I like to see both alto clef and treble clef. So if anything's going to be below the G string of the violin, please write it in alto clef. If it's going to be above the E string of a violin, any, anywhere in the stratosphere, please write in treble clef. Um, but that's just me personally. Some violinists who play five string violin, maybe they don't want to see alto clef, so write it in treble clef. Always ask your string players before you start writing for them. But for me, I would like to see both clefs. As you can see from the other clips in this video, the five string violin can play in multiple genres. So feel free to step out of your comfort zone with string writing. Remember that strings can be groovy. We can also be melodic and beautiful, but we can do many things. Um, and I look forward to recording your guys' pieces. And on that note, thanks so much for watching and feel free to reach out if you have any other questions. So that's a short video clip about um, some of the things you can do with five string. Um, should we uh, open it up for some questions you guys may have about the, the five string violin? I could also demonstrate some stuff if you'd like. Um, could you demonstrate the chopping? I couldn't see it in the video clearly. Yeah, so. I should note that um, not all, especially a classical violinist, will know how to how to chop. Um, it's still kind of more in the, the fiddly place. Um, but with you guys writing for chopping more and more, hopefully it'll be a more <laughs> accepted technique. Um, but so the chop groove I was doing in there was uh, very basic. So you're starting from the bridge of the violin. So this is the bridge right here. And I'm doing a preparation chop, and then I go forward towards the fingerboard, which is this this guy right here. So it sounds like this. So there's kind of like that one, two, three, four kind of a thing that drums can do. Um, so, and I also can put chords to it. So if I wanted to do, hang on, let me be able to hear myself. Um, you can put chords to chopping, so you can go. Also, if you are thinking of a chord progression, um, but you want it also to be percussive and groovy, you can also put what type of, of groove that you want, rather that be a rock groove or, or Latin, stuff like that, um, um, then you can put the chord progression that you want on top of it. Does that help you or do you, do you want a little bit more? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thanks. Cool. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, I was wondering, like, why, um, is, is there any reason why the five-string violin is not more standardized? Like, wh wh why isn't every violin a five-string violin? Um, is there any advantages to it being four-string, or is it just, like, tradition and the, how things popularly are? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think uh, they're probably not as popular because because there is a, a little element of tradition, but also um, it is kind of more difficult to play because the strings are closer together. Um, so you kind of have to learn, not really relearn technique, but to learn how to play without hitting other strings. So with the four string, um, you don't really have to worry about that because they're, they're um, positioned in a way where you don't have to worry about hitting the other strings when you play. But for example, if I was playing some high stuff, I'd, I'd, if I don't really think about it, I could be hitting other strings accidentally because they're closer together. So that may be a reason why it's um, not as common and why people use the four string violin. Um, for me, I also really love the tone of my E string on my four string violin. I'm not the biggest fan of it on the five string, um, but I love the low end of my five string. So if anything has like, if a piece is like primarily in the lower register, like below uh, the A string, uh, this note, I typically love playing it on the five string because it just sounds more like a viola. Um, so, and that's a lot more rich than a four string violin could give you. Um, but if a lot of times when pieces are E string heavy and it's very violinistic, I, I tend to go back to my four string just because I don't have to worry about hitting other strings, but also I just, I love the tone of it better uh, for the high end. Um, but that depends on the five string that you get, um, depending on how they build it. Um, so it could be different for each instrument, but I think that's probably the main difference. And that also um, you can be amplified with the five string um, and you can't do that with the four string, although you could just mic yourself on the four string. So that's also a way to do that as well. That makes sense. Thank you. Is, is there any different major difference uh, like um, uh, between the five string and the viola on the lower end, like you were saying about the, the low string sounding better on the, like does low string sound better on the viola than on this? Is it also sort of more middle of the ground? Yeah, um, I, I think, uh, at least with my five string, I think the, the C string um, sounds just as, as nice as my viola that I own. But I do agree that uh, um, the viola because it is a bigger instrument. Um, although the five string is a little bit bigger than the four string uh, violin, but it's still very similar to size of a violin than a viola. So with the viola, you're getting that, they have a larger body so they can sound, um, they have that lower register. It sounds a little bit better than the five string, but I, I think they can compete quite well with each other. Um, I will say I'd like the tone of my A string on the five string instead of on the viola, again, with the, the registers of the A string is the highest string on the viola. So it sounds a little too nasally in my opinion. So then um, when I play viola stuff on the five string, I just, it's like my open A string on the violin. So it's kind of depending on um, what kind of, what kind of tone you want when you choose between the instruments. That makes sense. Thank you. So, so it's, so it's sort, sort of almost like the five string is somewhat of a middle of the road between the two, although not exactly, but it's sort of like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Sort of. And there's also five string violas when they go to like the F string and all that stuff. So um, it can get pretty crazy with the extra strings that some strings, uh, string instruments have. Okay, the a violist here, first of all. Hey! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, what is the length of the body on the five string? So this is, oh gosh, um, it's probably written in here. Is it? Mm, no. Um, I think, so it's a little bit, um, let's see, please, let's see. I'm going to take this. Sorry, it was again. just one. <laughs> uh, one sec, it'll be okay. <laughs> It's a good question and I kind of want to know myself. Um, <laughs> so this is the five string and then this okay. is my viola, but also my viola is kind of, it's small. It's kind of made for like violinists trying to be violists. So it's, it's not a very big viola. I play um, on 15 and a half. Inch, so. Okay. So th I think this one's 15 and three quarters, something okay. like that. So that's the, the difference between a viola and five okay. string. I'm not, I'm not really sure the actual number, <laughs> but it's a, it's, it's smaller for sure. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, of course. All right. 
Any other questions you guys have? Um, one more. Yeah. I, um, one of my previous experiences at JCI, I remember writing something more in the lower range for a violin, and they were saying how it was difficult for them to project there. Um, I was wondering if you could explain why, and then if that, if it would be easier to project on a five-string violin with um, probably a slightly bigger body or. Right. So, um, do you remember what exactly you wrote, or <laughs> like maybe some of the notes? I'm I'm not sure why it would be kind of hard to uh, produce. Maybe was it um, high up on the on the fingerboard and and low, or was it just on the? It was on like the lower two strings and the G D, up maybe up to the A a little bit, but it was in the section that was building into a larger. And so it worked, they were able to project better and um, crescendo better when I moved it up an octave and it worked. Well. Oh, I see, I see what you mean. So it may be, um, a, a, yes, like a register type of thing when you're playing with an ensemble, um, definitely the violin will cut through when it's in their A string or, or, or E string. Um, Cause it's, it's just, it's, it's high up but it's also very powerful on that end, um, but um, in terms of uh, with the five string, I'm I'm thinking that it probably could cut through a little bit better than the four string, just because um, the 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 register down there it just sounds more like a viola. Um, but I think the biggest why they were saying that comment is probably because of within the ensemble it probably just wasn't cutting through until they went up the octave. That that makes sense. Um, uh, but yeah, does that answer the question? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Is there anything technically like, um, is it hard to uh, use the lower strings to cut through because your elbow is up or because the direction? Nothing of the like bow? that. I don't think so. Um, I think may maybe it was just a, a register issue with um, with the other players, but I, in terms of trying to, um, if it's anything more difficult to produce, I don't I don't think there should be any um, difficulty trying to make it make it happen on the lower strings. Yeah, I mean your elbow is supposed to be higher, but I don't I don't see that as a more uh, a difficult uh, thing to produce. So feel free to write that low and I'll have a fun time with it. <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. um, did you say there were pedals? Sorry, one, one more time. Uh, did you say there were like pedals or something? Yeah, um, so I have a distortion pedal, an octave, uh, pedal so it can keep going even lower than what it is. <laughs> um, I also have a harmonizer pedal, uh, all that stuff. Um, those are guitar pedals that I've just put through the violin, so they weren't specifically made for it, but um, but it's definitely possible. Um, one thing that I, I like to do with the five string, because you have that lower C string, I tune it down all the way to, to my open, to be an octave below my open G string. Um, So then it sounds really meaty, and then the the C string actually becomes a lot more um, flat. Um, you can add more percussive elements to it. Um, let's see if I'm actually. G string. Sometimes it's out of tune, but um, what I like to do is, is chop with it with the lower uh, G string. So it'd be like. You just get that lower octave and it sounds fun and it's also a percussive element. Um, so uh, some people don't recommend doing that with their instruments. Maybe they don't want to ruin it, but I, I have a fun time. Uh, tuning my strings to different notes, um, especially if they can be an octave below any of 
the my open streams it makes for some fun ideas and that it can sound very unique something that not a lot of people have heard violins do before um so that's another technique but yeah i have um distortion pedal um uh, harmonizer pedal octave pedal um I think that's it with what I have with me right now. There might be some somewhere else, but so feel free to write for those too. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. Why is the like a not to plug in the violin on the five string, but not on the four string? So. Hmm. I think it can be done. Um, I don't think it's it's a, a, a special case with only five strings can be uh, made to have an input like that. Um, but I think just uh, with the mentality of um, like heavy metal music and having lots of strings, um, that's kind of where that lives in that um, genre. So then they make it uh, electric too. Um, but I think technically you could put um, the little... Uh, the, the input that I have right here. Um, it depends on the maker, I guess. It's, um, um, yeah, I, I think it is totally possible to, to put it into a four string, um, but it's just not typically used. It's not really in the traditional realm of a, a violin, um, but, uh, um, yeah, not, um, they're not usually made that way, but um, if you go search up, you know, electric uh, violins or uh, ones that have multiple strings, they just usually have um, a place to, to plug in um, just because of where they're used in the genre. Um, but I do believe it is possible to like drill a little uh, <laughs> input into your four string, but probably have some help with that first. Um, but I think it's more of a, of a tradition thing that Typically, violins don't don't have that if they're not electric. All right, thank you. Yeah. So is your violin electric and acoustic? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So I can I can sound acoustic on the five string, but I can also plug it in to sound like a guitar or whatever. I can so, yeah. So that's a nice aspect of it too that I don't always have to be plugged in for it to be used. Um, yeah. Does your violin support MIDI? Um, in terms of like, uh, like, like plugging it into a software? Audio files. Yeah. Does it support MIDI files? Um, so, oh, what is it? So we're going, to, sorry, we're going into breakout, breakout rooms now, right? Randall, where did he go? Oh, okay. Um, sorry, I just got this thing that says to assign rooms. Um, oh, that, that. The host sorry. has to do that. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. Okay. Um, not quite sure what to do with that. But um, to answer your question, um, so it, it can be plugged into a digital audio workstation. Um, I don't, it's not going to recognize, um, uh, it's not, uh, it's not going to be like a MIDI controller where it can recognize the, the MIDI, but um, it can definitely plug in to a DAW. And so then, um, uh, so then you can use all the type of plugins that you want to use in your DAW. Um, but it won't work like a MIDI controller. Um, but, oh, someone said, oh, that's cool. Uh, Akai makes a MIDI violin type instrument. That would, that would be very cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I'm not sure. It might be some sort of like Guitar Hero-esque type of violin. But I'm not really sure, but that's really cool. I've never seen that. Um, I'm gonna get it. It's fine. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. Wow. 
Well, okay. Does anyone have any other questions about the five string? Um, I guess what's like a common mistake you see that like when reading music that somebody wrote, like what's something that you don't like? <laughs> um, let's see. Well, with the five string, I guess I don't have this problem, but um, usually people tend to write too low for the violin. Um, but now that's not a problem with my five string. Um, but I, th I guess there's two main things. Um, when people write pizzicato, um, pizzicato uh, lines, which is great, um, but they don't give the player enough time to switch from their bow holes, like this um, that we have, to being able to like hold it like this and then pluck. Um, that's a little pet peeve of mine. Um, when you know you're you're going along and you're pitching and then you don't even have any type of rest and you have to play like a huge long you know sort a uh, bunch of arco notes so um, just be mindful they have to give the player some time to go from here to here similar if you know they're playing arco and then they just randomly have to go to pits maybe they'll left hand or left hand pizzicato that but th they have to have some time to go to this uh, what this looks like um, so that's one. Uh, so maybe like, depending on how fast the music is, but usually a quarter note rest is enough to go from here to here. Um, maybe an eighth note rest, depending on how fast your music is going. Um, but just be mindful of that. Um, and I was going to say another thing. <laughs> um, oh, uh, some double stops that aren't possible. Um, so I get a lot of those, um, and sometimes I can make it work, but, uh, typically, um, let's see, um, when, when they're, when they're in two different strings, I can't make that possible unless I was, I had way bigger hands. Um, but sometimes people write double stops for, you know, a really no low note like this, but at the same time, they want me to play. So I don't know how I can do that. Um, so just be, um, uh, you can um, look up like where those notes are on the fingerboard. There's some helpful clips, um, like some images of what, um, where the player's fingers go. Um, so <clears throat> typically thirds are cool. Fifths are kind of nasty, but doable. Um, fourths are okay. Um, so, um, yeah, just be mindful of some double stops. And you can always email me um, to ask uh, any violin or viola questions um, to see if it's playable or not. Um, but those are basically my the only things that I see. Um, but everything else, I, I enjoy um, seeing the, the new music, so. I have a question. Mm -hmm. If you're playing a viola part, do you use the E string? I don't. Okay. Um, <laughs> I used to before I actually played the actual viola. <laughs> I used to just cop out and do the E string, um, but then now I don't. But um, just because then it doesn't sound like a viola part anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm with you on that. I, okay, I feel the, power. <laughs> yeah, I feel I feel the the, the struggle. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I've heard uh, string players practicing scales and octaves, um, like as a double stop. Is that yeah. like really difficult, or? I mean, uh, they're very doable. Um, they are a little bit harder to get in tune because they're they are octaves, but they're definitely um, way more doable than fifths, in my opinion. <laughs> um, so yeah, she's shaking her head. So, <laughs> uh, um, so definitely feel free to do that. Um, uh, they they just take a little bit a little bit more work, but they're definitely possible. Mm -hmm. So, um, how large of an interval are you comfortable going on a double um, stop? Um, let's see. <laughs> Got it. I mean, I think maybe 10th. <laughs> 
comments would be great to stop at. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, let's let's leave it at that. Um, we'll make it sound good at tense. There. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to do with these breakout rooms. Hey. But, oh, Sarah's back. Okay, good. <laughs> I've been here. I've just been listening. Oh, great. Well, nice job, Louisa. Thank um, you. And I think what you have to do is make me the host, and then I'll make Seth the host, but then I'll set up a breakout room for you if there are any people who want to spend more time with Louisa. So if you want to spend more time with Louisa, Let's see, um, I wanna go to gallery view so I can see. Anyone who wants to spend more time with Louisa, hold up your hand like this so I know how many there are. Winston wants to, and I'm gonna write down names. Anyone else? I can't see Kevin and Ellie and Josiah and hybrid aerotech. So if any of you want to, you can. Um, So you opened the breakout room, Louisa? Um, I just, I made you host, that's... Uh... Oh, okay. So then away came. And I think the trumpet room is done, is that correct? Yes. So I'm gonna close all rooms. And then I'm going to delete rooms like trumpet room. We don't need it. Mm -hmm. Add a room. So we're going to have a breakout room that's called um, Louisa. Sure. <laughs> That'd be good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we have Winston wants to be in there. Anyone else want to be with Louisa? I have to move my breakout room thing so I can see. Everyone else felt like they got their questions answered? Okay. And options. It'll close automatically in 30 minutes because you're only supposed to have to do 30 minutes. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna put move all participants into them automatically. That would be good, right? And I'm going to add another room that will be, who's next? We have, we have harp and who remembers what the other thing is? Not percussion. Cello. Oh, percussion. Okay, question. Someone had a question. No, I think someone said percussion. Oh, percussion. Yes, thank you. Because we'll want a Louisa room and a percussion room. Um, and actually, this one will last, oh, I'm going to say 50 minutes anyway. Louisa, you'll just have to leave when you're ready. Okay. And we don't have those other people here yet, and I'm not sure I can move people automatically. But we'll see. I want to see if the option, good, that's a good option. Um, who is going to want to go to the percussion room? Carter, hang on, I'll get your hands. Carter and AJ. AJ, Carter, who else? And Josiah and Jeremy and Tim, I guess, and Becca and... Who didn't I get yet? Who wants no. to go? So, so what, what, what's the question? Um, I'm finding out who wants to go to the percussion room to learn about percussion with Bob Adney. And Xander wants to do that. So, um, and Nathan wants to do that. Um, so Kevin, I have eight. Kevin's raising his hand. 
Kevin too. Thank you, Kevin. So I have AJ, Becca, Carter, Hybrid, Aerotech, Jeremy, Josiah, Kevin, Nathan, Tim, I guess, and Xander. Is there anyone else who wants to go to that room? Okay. And I will have to wait until Bob gets here to send you all away. Okay. Once Bob gets here, and he usually signs on to things early because that's how Bob is. Um, he's terrific. Just saying. So, Louisa, you get to kind of cool your heels for a minute. I'm sorry. Okay, oh, no, no Tim is. <laughs> Here's Randall back again. I need to uh, head over to another breakout room. Could you? Oh, I'm already a co-host. And I'm taking- You are a co-host. I'm setting up rooms percussion and Louisa so That's that great. the people will stay here to be with um, Mariah. Okay. Seth is not back yet and Bob is not here yet. Okay. And I can't, I don't think I can send people off with Louisa until, can we have breakout rooms starting at different times? Yes, you can. Oh, so I could send, I could open one room. Yep. And have her start the recording, I think. You're going to have to make her a co-host. Yes, yeah, she made me uh, host. All right. I need to go to a breakout room. So Louisa, maybe you can set up your own breakout room with Winston now that I made you co-host. Okay. How would that be? Um, yeah, I can do that. I'm trying to figure out how to get um, a breakout I'm, I'm room. I'm deleting with... you from this one so that you can do your own, Louisa. Thank okay. I have to just figure out how to. Have you ever done breakout rooms? They aren't too hard. I haven't. Um, I don't see an icon that says breakout room because I, I know what it looks like, um, but I don't see it on my. I don't either right now. So maybe I have to add all the rooms or add them one at a time and get rid of everybody. I had everybody in the percussion room. <laughs> Oh, but no. if I start that one, then we're out of luck, unless Bob is here. Bob is not here. Bob just sent me a note. I'm going to, um, hold on a second. Just going to. Because I will start rooms with you and Louisa and then hope that I can start another one. Okay. How would that be? Louisa and Winston, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do, add a room. Sorry. We're learning. <laughs> Louisa and assign Winston and Louisa. Okay, and then I'm going to add another room that is, oh, I have to rename it too. Sorry. Rename. This will be Randall. And who will be in your room, Randall? You and Randall? Randall, who's in the room with you? He's typing. I can hear him typing. <laughs> Randall, who's in your room with you? He must not be listening. Well, I'm going to open your room, Louisa, and then I'm hoping I can open other rooms. Okay, sounds good. Okay, bye. I'm going to have to make another new one. Darn it all.
Well, if I have a Louisa and a Randall. Randall, who do you want in your room? <laughs> Sorry about this. And Bob is not here yet. I think I have to have started percussion room. Darn it all. I gotta beep beep. Who is that? Oh, Seth. Seth? Yes. Can you guys hear me? Um, yes, I can hear you. And I want to make you a host. I'm letting Jared in. The trick is, Randall, are you there now? Are you listening? He's still not listening. Um, I need to get another room because we have Randall's room, we have Louisa's room, we have unassigned, which will be your room, Seth. Okay. And I need to make another room and I'm not sure how to do that at this point. Try sending a message to Randall. He might have his computer mm -hmm. muted. That's true. I will send a chat just to Randall. Another breakout room and can't see. Okay, and do we have Bob yet? Who is making noise? Yeah, that was Nathan. Oh, Bob is here. Randall, are you listening yet? Hey. Oh, there you are. Yep. So here's the issue. I have three breakout rooms hmm. set up and one is open. And I'm not sure how to, it, it's like close all rooms. I can't open a new room and we need one more. You have to close all the rooms and restart. Okay. So Lisa will have to come back. Yep. Hmm. And it will take uh, one, it'll take two minutes. Okay. Uh, do, we, do we need a bunch of different rooms at this point? We need Randall one for needs Louisa. A room for his lesson. Louisa needs one. I've, I've, I've dropped up my lessons out. I'm pushing them all out after, into the evening. So we're done. Okay. So can it's Louisa. Start, can we start some stuff with Bob right now while we're Bob? at the other room? Yeah. Yeah. Bob is. Where is Bob? Bob's here. Oh, there he is. Hi, Bob. He's frozen. We still have, oh, now he moved, sort of. Hi, Bob. Do you hear me, Bob? <laughs> we still have 64 seconds. We want breakout rooms to close quicker, let me tell you. We are learning. Mm -hmm.
And I'm so a co-host. I'm a co-host, but I can't I can't figure out where to go to start all of the buttons. Um, right now, I'm host, and I think I have to set them all up, and then I will make Seth host. Got it. And I will set up a room for Louisa if she and Winston are not done. Okay. Thirty seconds, and one for Bob, and then Seth, you will be the host. I'll make Bob a co-host. Okay. As a co-host, I'm not allowed to start a, a meeting room, breakout room? I guess not. Okay. I oh, can make fun. you host right now. So, sir, I can't hear anything. Do you hear me? Yeah. I hear you now. Give me, oh, okay. Do you hear us now? So, yeah, I'm not hearing, I'm not on mute. Is it just a matter of turning up the volume? Louisa, do you and Winston need more time? Um, what do you think, Winston? Do you, do you want some more time? We, we're Frustrating. <laughs> I don't know. I so I wonder, hmm. We could have like maybe 10 more minutes. Maybe that'll be good. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll start you up in a second again. Okay, sure. Bob, are you hearing us now? And while I'm waiting, who wants to be with Bob again? I'm sorry, I had to stop everything. AJ um, and Jeremy and Becca got you. Carter. When I get you, then you can move. Randall, you're looking very patient. So yeah, you can hear me. I'm just so sorry I can't hear you. Who else? Jeremy? My speakers are on. I've, I'm playing That's YouTube uh, videos. Joe. Um, oh, maybe here. Let's go to a Zoom preference. Who else wanted to be with Bob? There were a bunch of you. Xander, the right? Audio. Carter. Carter. Nathan. I think that's Test Tim. Tim, Tim, is your hand up? Tim. Kevin. Yeah, I thought so. Sorry, I had to do this again. Xander, did you want to be? Is he here? Xander, yes, you wanted to. Oh, I'm hearing it. You're hearing I'll, us. I'll go too. Yeah, you know. Who just said I'll go too? Uh, me, Josiah. Josiah, thank you. Kevin, you so, want to go too? I got yep. Kevin. Got so, it. oh, and I, I got to send Bob. That'd be good. So the one staying here for the harp, Allie, Jared, Jay, Jonas, Landon, Mari, Randall, Seth. Sound good? Yep. And it will be 50 minutes and we're, the breakout room will stop in 30 seconds because that was crazy. Make I'm opening all the rooms and then Seth, I'm going to make you co-host. Oh, go. host. Host. Yes. Seth Custer will be host. Okay. So now yes. I'm nothing. Okay. Now, now Seth, at three o'clock, uh, you're running things, and now you're the only one who can control the creation of new breakout rooms. I have to go get my cello and get ready for my session at, at four. Okay, so am I, am I getting in with Bob's room and running that session? No, Bob is running his own. Okay. Yep. So what do you need from me during this session? Am I just hanging out? You're hanging out and is Mariah there? Um, no, she, we were, for some reason, we were thinking that she and Bob were taking part of the hour each. No, you each get the whole time. There's two Just sessions. In, but they're going, so they're going on concurrently in different places? Yes. Okay. Um, that was, that was a misunderstanding then. I'm sorry. I, cause I didn't realize that it wasn't even possible for people to be at all the sessions. I didn't know they were going there on. There are two theory classes. There are two musician classes. There are. Okay. 
I thought it was splitting the hour. So um, Mariah, there's going, it's going to be a few minutes before Mariah can do this because she's finishing up a lesson that she's teaching. Did she make a video that you can show? Uh, no, not exactly. She, okay. she has some things she's going to show, but I wonder if, um, let's see, it's Jonas, Allie, Jay, Mariana, and Landon. You guys were going to see harp stuff. So is it possible for them to join one of the other rooms and then come back here in like 15, 20 minutes? Um, I think so. You are the host, so you can maybe go into those rooms and assign them to those and they can choose to leave to come back to the main meeting. Okay, I'll do that. Um, what, what room do you guys want to go to? Uh, Landon, Mark, do you guys want to go check out Bob? Yes, with the percussion. What time should we come back? Um, let's say at four four twenty-five. Okay. Or three twenty-five Central Time. Right. Four twenty-five Eastern Time. Eastern. Thank you. Three twenty-five Mountain Time, Jay. You're in Colorado, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Three twenty-five Central. Okay. okay. So I'm going to. You just you can just mute and stop video, but put them in the room first, and then when you're ready, you can come back. Okay. So see you guys at three twenty-five. Are you still there, Sarah? I am. Um, I just thought I'd keep my presence here just in case you need me, but I'm going to be hopping around a little bit, taking care of stuff. Yeah, no worries. So, yep. so we have to figure out something with this breakout room thing. Because this is yeah. absolutely crazy right now with breakout rooms. It is. There has to be a way to set up a breakout room situation where people can go to what they want to go to and for yeah. us to not have to assign everyone all the time. I know. And I don't know if that's possible. I could do a little bit of research right now. Um, just Google it. Possible to, what do we want to say? Set up breakout rooms in Zoom that um, people can join and leave at will. Beth, I'm going to look at a video.
Um, so I just got done with Winston. Um, am I okay. uh, just wondering what the next the plan is? Well, at this point, you may leave if you like. Okay. Um, Seth is the host right now. And I don't think I can send Winston over to the percussion yet, because I'm not the host. Seth is, and Seth, Seth thought that they were going to be, um, for Mariah, that she was going to be the second half of the session, not oh. that it was going to be concurrent. So she was still teaching a student. So they're going to start the harp session in about 10 minutes. There's Seth. Hey so Winston, do you want to go over to Bob's session? Because Seth can send you over there. Sure. Yeah, I'll send you over there, Winston, and then I'll get you a notification when we start up the harp session. All right. And you can come back then. Okay. Yeah, because okay. you can message everyone as mm -hmm. the host, Seth. Right. Yeah. And Louisa, I think you're done for today. Sounds good. You did great. Thanks. <laughs> it's so nice to see you. Yes, I know, even through Zoom, but it's nice I to know. see you both. <laughs> yeah, it's like Louisa, close together. Right Sorry? Where are you right now? I'm I'm in uh, Wasika, Minnesota, where I'm from, so I'm back in my okay. childhood home. <laughs> yeah, Ron was saying, Louisa, she's the one from way down south. And I said, yeah, in a W town. Which one was it? Wasika, yeah. Ladina? He said Wasika. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Winston, did you get that thing that I sent you? Uh, I don't know what I'm looking for. So I guess not. <laughs> it should be like an invitation to attend a breakout room or something it, like that. There's a button that says uh, join breakout room. Yeah, then you can. OK. If you so you just push that button and you'll be there. Cool. There we go. And the kids had lots of questions for Louisa. So that was great, Seth. Good. Yeah. Good. Lots and lots of questions. And then Winston wanted to know a whole bunch more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was great. I, yeah. I guess I was reading the, the chat and the video was lagged or something. Oh yeah. And that's fairly common, but at the same time, the sound on a video, especially if you enable it for better sound, mm -hmm. is better than it would be if you were just playing. Yeah. Especially the piano. I, it's not as bad for strings, mm. but you don't get as much lag if you're playing in person. That's true. So, so and play your, play your violin right now. I want to, I want to hear how much different it sounds, because it could be that it's not that bad. Um. Okay, still have to get used to wearing headphones and trying to do this. Um, so. to the piano. <laughs> it's it's, it's like they like take the piano. sound and they, they like compressed it or something. Well, and oh, I haven't done my sounds on this yet because there are certain things you can do with audio settings. Um, I had the automatically adjust volume, which you have to turn off. Oh. And then you want to be able to do enable original sound and disable the suppressions that they have automatically. And now listen and tell me if it's better. It's better by a little bit, but still it feels like it's compressing it. But I think that's just what Zoom does, unfortunately. Zoom is idealized for the human voice. And what I did instead of a video... I know Randall thought a video was a good idea. I did a Google slideshow and I have oh. the printed music on there. And then um, I play examples. Oh, nice. Them, and then I have questions with each slide. So that makes it a little more interactive. Mm -hmm. Than just sitting there watching. <laughs> watching a video that's lagging. So yeah, oh, so that's too bad. With, with strings, it's 
it would have been okay for you to play in person. Hmm. Okay. But it was probably nice for you not to have to. Either way, I'd be fine with both. It is a little, it's, I need to get a longer cord or something because that, that's annoying to have to play with this on, but. Um, oh dear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I just didn't want, uh, um, because there's other, my sisters are also home and they have to do their work and everything. So it's like, you got to put the headphones on. So, <laughs> yeah. But have you graduated now? So or I graduated a uh, performance at Berkeley, but I have one more year in film scoring and conducting as my minor. So nice. yeah, almost done. Going to graduate online probably, <laughs> but who knows? I still remember having you in my class. And you had your big, long book of manuscript paper, and you had all these ideas, and you didn't know how to get them down. No, but not at all. you certainly <laughs> persevered and made it happen. Yes, all, um, thanks to, all thanks to you. I had no idea what theory was at all. <laughs> well, you have learned so much since then. Yeah. It is terrific. And, and we just got notice from McPhail that we're mostly going to be online still in the fall. Yeah, Berkeley's trying to do a, a hybrid um, course so that 60% um, would, would still be online, but 40% like our studio sessions and stuff like that would be in person. Um, so, uh, and a lot of my film scoring electives will be in person too, but I don't know how that's all going to, what it's going to look like, but we'll see. They may change their mind by the time we get there, but especially now with the whole international student thing they they're trying oh, to Lord. figure out yeah because we're very we're a very big international school too so they're trying to figure that out yeah my son is at St. Olaf and they're oh, talking wow. about being in person and starting August 20th and then sending them all home at Thanksgiving but I oh. think some of their classes would not would be still remotely because some of the teachers are in the at risk category and I think they would probably make videos. Yeah. Yeah, that's another thing. It's like if your teacher gets sick or they maybe they they test positive, it's like what do you do with class then? It's like <sighs> it's a weird thing. I don't know. I don't know. And the news out of Florida is not good. Oh my gosh, that's the numbers keep rising each time. <laughs> I have a, um, a, um, a, a co-worker who moved out. She used to work for Berkeley Admissions and she was my boss for a little bit. And then she moved to Florida to do a different university. And so each day on Facebook, she posts the new cases and it's outrageous how many new cases there are every time she posts, but it'll pass. Yeah. It will. Sometime. <laughs> Sometime. We'll see how many of us get it and how many of us survive. Yeah. Yeah. It's been nice being uh, very isolated back on the farm. <laughs> no one to see. Don't, don't have to get sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But probably people aren't wearing masks at the grocery store down there. Not too many. It's, uh, it's, it's probably 60-40 that are, are like more people are trying to wear masks because I think um, he, like our governor made it uh, a, a, I don't know if it's a law because then I would see more people doing it, but no, he strongly he recommended. <laughs> no, he didn't because the Republicans are so against it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. And the thing is when you wear a mask, you're protecting the people around you. Exactly. You're not protecting yourself. So that's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, and with my, with my um, dairy allergy, we always have to go to different grocery stores that are a little farther away to, that have this sort of stuff. So when we go farther away, more people wear masks because we're going more up north <laughs> to like the Minneapolis area. Well, so it's a law in Minneapolis. Yeah, Although yeah. I will admit, I still walk into stores sometimes and see people with no masks. Yeah. And I just crazy. walk the other way. <laughs> mm hmm Yep. Me too. It's, it's crazy. It's one of those things. Yeah. Anyway. But, but this was fun. Um, I'm glad that it's working out uh, 
that on, on Zoom um, that yeah, we can sell the can. Not, it's not perfect. And I was watching a video about breakout rooms. Mm. And it seems that you can only have them all start at the same time and all ends at the same time. Oh, I see. Although people can choose to leave them, but if people haven't shown up yet, it's it's kind of tricky. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. And yeah, I'm doing my session at four. Nice. On the piano. Yeah. And then so, these videos will be put to um, your guys' in the shared pop. There's a Google Drive folder, and then there's also the um, YouTube channel. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. And we're still recording, but no one wants oh. to start. <laughs> Seth is the one who would have to stop it. Yeah, I will edit it out. <laughs> yeah. So. All right, I'm going to get going, but I'll see okay. you nice probably sometime you, this Lisa. week. <laughs> yes, Thanks. I hope so. Bye. Bye. Hi, Landon. Hi, Jonas. Hello. So um, Seth said he was going to send a message when Mariah was ready. Okay. Yeah, we're we're getting You're queued there? up here. Okay, and I'm gonna stop my video and mute, but I'll be around here because my session will start at four. And and Seth, I did look at videos, and it looks like you can you can only have all the sessions start at the same time. Okay, so we have Jay and Jonas. Yep. Did you send a message to the breakout room? No, I'm gonna do this um, broadcast message to all now. Okay, so how many of you guys um, have ever written for HARP? Anybody, anybody done that before? I've written pieces that have HARP in it, but never for um, HARP performer before. Just okay. Just on, uh, just on uh, digital audio workstations. Okay, cool. How many people have written in a large ensemble piece that included HARP? Was talking to some folks earlier. So you haven't. You haven't written for Heart before. Um, uh, it is this link. Okay. So, uh, what you'll find is that in a lot of ways, the harp is actually similar to the piano in the so, way that you. So one way that, quick thing. Yes. Um, turn off the recording and start it again so you're starting a new video and we don't have to edit it down later. Okay. So, I'm. So I do stop. Stop recording, then start it again. Okay. <laughs>